Good luck, YYA951. Hi, I'm Rich Lund, and welcome to another episode of Raising Monarchs. This one, all about sanitation. When it comes to issues or even losses in our process, sometimes we can diagnose what and why it happened. But other times, that loss is and shall remain a mystery. Unless you have some pretty sophisticated lab equipment in your basement and you can perform a clinical caterpillar autopsy, you might not ever get to find out why did that caterpillar that seemed fine the day before pass suddenly in the night. When it comes to whatever process we are doing to rear our monarchs, we have to recognize that we do not have absolute control over the situation. Just as Michael Crichton's classic novel Jurassic Park tried to teach us, you don't have 100% control and any belief that you do is just an illusion. But what we do have the power to do is to try to make efforts to minimize these losses. The first and number one way to minimize losses is something I've tried to advocate throughout this video series. And that is to take eggs in from nature and raise the caterpillars in controlled environments. But let's say you're already doing that. You already are raising them in controlled environments. What else can we do to minimize the losses? And the overwhelming answer there is sanitation. Once you've taken out of the equation many of the pests and predators out there in nature that would try to victimize the caterpillar or the egg, then really it comes down to just three main things. The OE parasite, bacterial infections, and the NPV virus. And yes, I know the V in NPV stands for virus, so saying NPV virus is kind of redundant. Gotcha. It still just somehow feels better to say it that way. And if you're raising your caterpillars in controlled environments, then those are the three main categories of things that are still posing a risk to your caterpillars and could take them out. Now, a couple of things that you can already do is start bleach treating your eggs and leaves. And I've made a couple of videos on how to do that already. They're down in the description below. If you decide to review those videos and start bleach treating, well, what that means is once you've brought in an egg or any leaves that you might be using for food, you can ensure that they are... OE parasite, NPV, and bacteria free. But really, whether or not you want to start bleach treating kind of has to do with where you live. If you're in certain areas of North America where OE is just running rampant, well, I've heard many tell me that once they started bleach treating, their success rate improved incredibly. They started to have almost no issues with OE whatsoever. But if you're in other areas of the country where there's harsh winters that kill off the milkweed stalks every year, then probably OE isn't too big of a problem for you. And I could understand deciding not to bleach treat your leaves and eggs. Either way though, whether you've decided to start bleach treating or not, we all still need to keep our containers sanitary. We have to provide a relatively clean environment for these caterpillars to grow in. Otherwise, we start to build up a risk of chance of infection. If you have an outbreak of one of these, it can crash your whole system. So, as requested, I'm about to show you what I do for sanitation. But before I get into it, I gotta spoil something for you. Spoiler alert! If I make a video that shows you how I sanitize and how often I do it, then there's going to be some people out there who disagree with my method of what I'm doing. And the thing is, some would say that I'm doing it too much, and others would say I'm doing it too little. You see, one thing that's true usually about us monarch raisers is that we're passionate about this. And whenever you're passionate about something, you tend to have pretty strong opinions about it. In addition to that, every time you sanitize, understand that you are disrupting those caterpillars. And so really, trying to keep things sanitary, well, there's a spectrum there of doing it too little or too much. If we're not doing it enough, then we risk the chance of infections and bacteria building up in there and creating an unhealthy environment for the caterpillars. At the same time, if we go to the other end of the spectrum and we are doing it too often, then we are over-sanitizing. We are handling these caterpillars often and causing them a lot of unneeded stress. We want to find a happy medium. Needless to say, not only can bacteria and viruses cause health problems, too much stress can cause health problems as well. So I just kind of wanted to get a little bit out in front of this idea. If you watch this video and you feel like what I'm doing is too much, or you feel like what I'm doing is too little, duly noted. I hear, respect, and understand your concerns. Namaste. But at the same time, if I was doing something that was potentially hazardous, I think that the data would reflect that by now. And it doesn't. So it would not be that I don't hear you, and it would not be that I don't respect you. It's just I hear and I respect the numbers more. If anything, I think it's pretty darn cool that you're that passionate about monarchs. Okay, let's get into it. All right, for starters, containers, whether they're the large or small ones that I use, 
I empty out their frass twice a day. If you didn't know, frass is the name for caterpillar poo. It's not uncommon that you might have some up here near the top. Perhaps they're getting ready to molt, but they can be left undisturbed. Any plant debris that seems to have you know, served its purpose can be removed. Certainly double check it, make sure that there's no cats hiding there. I know that this has got just third or fourth instar caterpillars in there, so they shouldn't be hiding anywhere, but still you just want to thoroughly check. Meanwhile, any of these guys that are still on the leaves, I can just move over here to the top of my container. And they can all kind of sit there while I empty out the frass. Now when I empty it out, I'm just pouring out the dry frass that's in there. I don't need to get it perfect. Might tap it a few times. But I'm definitely not going to wipe that frass out. But I don't want to take a cloth and try to wipe it out, because really that what that's going to do is smear the poo around. And that just gives the bacteria more of a surface to be on. really spreads that bacteria everywhere. For just a twice daily cleaning of the container, this does it well for me. Keeps things relatively clean and also leaves them relatively undisturbed. And maybe it goes without saying, but if you're doing this, well, you might as well have it be feeding time too. So this is maybe when I put some fresh leaves, and I put them on top of the older leaves. There's already caterpillars on the older leaves. Well, they're just going to eat and poo, and I'd rather them eat and poo and drop that on the container surface than on this fresh food surface. Put the lid back on, and this one's done. Here's another container, and the instars in here are a lot younger. Since the instars are younger in this one, most of that leaf really is still salvageable. It's still good to use. So I'll just pick up the leaf and maybe tap it a little bit. Don't want a caterpillar to fall off. Lay it on my lid. There we go. Now sometimes you might have a caterpillar clinging to the side of a container, in which case just empty it a little bit gentler, and that caterpillar should be able to uh, stay on to the side. But also, just in case, whenever I go to do this, I'm using a trash container that doesn't have a bunch of other foreign trash in there. Worst case scenario, and this only happens every once in a while, the caterpillar goes down in there with them, and I have to retrieve that caterpillar. But usually I can not have to disturb them. If they are large enough, and also they're not about to molt, then I, I can remove them, and I'll place them in with the others. But... Usually they cling on to the sides just fine, and I'm just gently tapping anyway. And again, I empty out the frass like this twice a day. Now this is also the procedure that's pretty much true for my larger containers as well. The one difference is I might check first up at the top and see, are any of the ones that were J-hanging going into chrysalis at that time? In which case I might hold off for a little bit. Let them finish making their chrysalis and let the chrysalis harden. Right now, though, already checked, and we're good to go. So I just carefully remove my lid. Since in this container there's only 4th or 5th instar, they're pretty easy to spot and find. And so if I'm quick about it, and I count as I go, then I might take all of them out at once, and even though I'm not putting them someplace, I know how many there are, so I know how many I need to get back when I'm done. Grass is emptied. Caterpillars are placed back in. Any leaves that are out of use, out of commission, we can toss and to give them some fresh food. There you go, guys. Eat up. Return the cover. And you can see that we've cleaned out the frass, and we've minimized handling and disrupting, really, the caterpillars while we did it. Now that keeps things somewhat tidy, but let's be clear, we didn't sanitize anything there. If that's all we ever did, bacteria and potentially other baddies might build up in there, creating an unhealthy environment. We need to do some actual cleaning, it just doesn't need to happen twice a day. And so for actual sanitation, 
how often you do it really is going to depend upon how many are you housing together. The ideal situation, of course, would be to have just one caterpillar per container. But for most of us, that's not going to be too feasible or reasonable to be able to do. In my containers, these to-go food containers, I try to keep just six in there. But I'll admit, if I have a lot of numbers going through by process, if I have a big push coming through, then I'll up this to seven or even eight. But as I go beyond eight, even if I did nine, probably some things could be okay. But the higher I get above a certain number, then the more crowded they're going to be. The frass is going to build up sooner, it needs to be emptied more often, which means handling them more often and causing them more stress, and the overcrowding issue starts to become a problem, and that too can cause some stress. You want to try to make sure not to keep too many in the same container. And even in larger containers like this, I try to keep it, since it's a little bit larger, I try to keep it around 8, but sometimes I am willing to push it up to 10. Alright, so now for actual sanitation, I have this happen once a week. Whether it be my small containers or my larger one that you've seen, I will fully sanitize it once each week, usually on Sundays, but plus or minus a day, Saturday or Sunday. The easiest way to do this is to just have already another container that's already been sanitized ready to go. The ones on the lid we'll put aside for a second. We'll let that be underneath our fresh ones. For the reasons I said before. That way they poop onto the ground and not onto their fresh food. Now for these ones here, you might be able to notice on this guy, his face cap is starting to come off. And so that means this guy is about ready to molt. So I don't want to disturb him. Instead, I'm just going to leave him on the lid. In fact, it's safe to assume that that might be why all these guys are up here. They're about ready to molt. Yep, each one. So really, I'm going to keep an eye on them, and I'm going to just place them into the empty container again, and I'm going to wait for them to molt. The other ones are in a fresh container. And once these guys have molted, I will then put them in here, and then this container can be sanitized. Once I've gotten all the caterpillars out of there, then I hand scrub these containers with warm water and antibacterial dish soap. Essentially, I'm washing the dishes. A dishwasher could work, but I found that sometimes the silk these guys have, it sometimes builds up and it doesn't always come out in a machine cycle. And I don't really want that silk in my dishwasher anyway. So I go with hand scrubbing. Helps me make sure, too, to get all the nooks and crannies. After rinsing them, I then bleach treat each one. At this point, that's mainly to be a safeguard against NPV. OE shouldn't be anywhere in my system, and the dish soap should really take care of any bacteria. But a virus could potentially have made it through all of that. So I fill the container with bleach solution, and I let it sit, usually about five minutes, though sometimes I'll go beyond that. I use the same 5% bleach solution that I've shown how to make in those other bleach treating videos if you want to check it out. Now, actually, if you wanted, you certainly could use something stronger than the 5% bleach solution. I'm just using it because I usually have some on hand already mixed up for me. But if you wanted to, you could just watch those videos and eyeball about how much bleach I put in there and just make sure to go beyond that. Make something stronger. There's no harm in using a stronger bleach solution for this, provided, of course, you rinse it thoroughly. And certainly if you're doing many of these at once, you could even just fill up a sink with water and then add enough bleach to sanitize and just do them all at once, let them just soak in there. That's also an option, but this is just showing you a one-at-a-time situation. And some have let me know that there are other sources out there that even tell you that to sanitize tools and equipment, you should be using a stronger concentration than a 5% solution. Some as far as 20% bleach solution and that five minutes isn't always enough, that it should be even longer than that. Well, I, I don't disagree, that would certainly do the job. The thing is, a 5% bleach solution for one minute exposure, that's enough to kill any of the OE parasites, NPV, and bacteria when we bleach treat eggs. So I don't see how using a 5% solution and letting it last in there for five minutes wouldn't also effectively do that job. Once I've let my containers sit for at least five minutes, I rinse them out extremely generously. Make sure to get every little crevice, every little nook and cranny. We do not want to have any residue bleach remaining in there when we're done. So my general rule is to just rinse more than you think you need to. 
And then once you've done that, rinse one more time. Promptly dry them out, and now they're ready for next time or future residents that are soon to hatch from some eggs that you may be found. If you don't have a lot of extra containers, that might just mean you need to put your caterpillars someplace while you clean out yours. But for the amount of caterpillars that I have in a container, I do this once a week. If you think that you want to do that more often, I think, you know, hey, twice a week with that much probably isn't overhandling them. Three times a week, four times a week, I don't really know where to draw the line. All I know is that I had a bacterial outbreak last year, and that's when I started taking sanitation a lot more seriously. And since doing that, I've been sanitizing once a week, and I haven't had any outbreaks. All right, there you have it. That's the sanitation procedures that I do. And as always, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not showing you a procedure and saying, you must do it this way. I'm just showing you what I do to get the success that I've gotten. If you choose to use these procedures or modify them to suit your needs better, more power to you. It's all just about what are the end results. Are you getting the success that you want to get? Thank you for checking this out. I'm Rich Lund, and I want to thank you very much for doing what you can to help out the monarch butterfly. Catch you next time.